Dirty Moderates, Democracy Wins in Ohio. That is the subject of today's episode. Democracy Wins and a Pathway is Cleared for Democracy to be Exercised Yet Again and Practiced Fully and Fairly in the Name of Abortion Rights. Okay, there's an old saying in politics, as Ohio goes, so goes the nation. So up until 2020, Ohio was considered a bellwether state in national elections. That means that it voted uh, with the majority and the winner in many a presidential election all the way back to 1960. That was the last time they hadn't uh, when, although JFK was elected, Richard Nixon carried the state. Okay. In 2020, Donald Trump yet again uh, carried what has become Ruby Red Ohio. It used to be a swing state. Obama carried it twice. Bill Clinton carried it twice. It had flipped between Democrats and Republicans through the years. Trump carried Ohio even though he lost the election. That was the first year since 1960. Okay, So this sort of as Ohio goes, so goes the nation thing is, was tested in a way. But Tuesday's vote which was an attempt by the Republicans in the state legislature to make it harder to amend the state constitution, was a victory for democracy, okay, a defeat for the Republican-controlled state legislature, and certainly an important victory for the abortion rights movement, especially uh, in the wake of the Dobbs decision overturning Roe v. Wade. Now, the abortion question... um, turned what would have probably been a nothing election, you know, the dog days of summer here, an off year too. This is 2023. We're not even in a technical election year, but there's always off year elections. It, it, it put the abortion fight yet again, center stage, and drew a huge turnout on a Tuesday in August from voters in Ohio. Okay. The results showed a 13-point defeat when all was said and done, um, about 57% or 56.5% in uh, voting against issue one, which is what it was called. It's the ballot initiative. 43.5 voting for. Okay, that is 2.8 million votes cast. That was greater. It dwarfed the 1.66 million ballots that were counted in the state's 2022 primary election which included races for governor, the Senate, and the House, last year's big election. Okay, so more people came out to vote on this issue than they did in big election issues of an election year like 2022. This this whole thing was also a test of, yet again, the GOP's continuing efforts to use um, uh, a gerrymandered legislature, which they have, and Ohio's not the only one that has that, to stop all these ballot initiatives, right? Because what's the people speak? And let me explain what I mean by that. One of the reasons that Ohio seems redder than it probably is, is because the legislatures um, since 2010 really have, for the legislature there, like other red states, has gerrymandered, which means created Republican districts throughout the state. Okay, deep red districts, which means that as Ohio has been trending Republican, people see the R and they vote for it which means it's very difficult for people who aren't crazy anti-abortionist MAGA type people to be elected to the state legislature because the primaries often are not competitive because the most conservative candidate wins. And then people in the general just vote Republican because the D has become so toxic. But all of this being said, there is a nuance in the electorate which you saw come out where people were asked directly, as in direct democracy, Should we have majority rule? And voters said, yes. How dare you try to raise the threshold of what it would take to amend the state constitution from a simple majority, that's 50% plus one, to 60%. Democracy is not a 60-40 proposition, even in states that are 60-40 Republican or 60-40 Democrat. All it takes is a simple majority to pass things, especially when they're on the ballot. Okay. And this is a key barometer going into 2024, folks. You know, we covered 2022 live on election night. We formed our podcast here at the uh, tail end of 2021, going into what was a huge year that even President Biden made democracy the centerpiece of the midterm elections. Well, abortion and democracy 
helped the blue team tremendously, tremendously hold on to power last year, uh, kept them in the Senate, even picked up a seat. The House went Republican only by five seats because it's gerrymandered in those places, but that's another story. So, but blue state governors won, ballot initiatives won. Okay. Now, organizations that oppose this issue won. Okay. Um, have absolutely been correct in calling this a decisive defeat for the Republicans in the state house. Okay. They ordered the referendum. The Republicans did because they wanted to derail this November vote on a constitutional amendment that would guarantee abortion rights. That's why they, they did this. And they already had, they had famously said, we don't do ballot initiatives in August. Nobody comes out to vote. So think about that. Not only did they put it on a Tuesday in August, they tried to not, uh, they tried to prevent it totally. And even people who aren't necessarily pro-choice saw this as an unconstitutional power grab by legislators who were up to no good. Voters knew that their rights were being taken away, and they said, fuck you. Right? The ballot measure. The ballot measure imagine this. Would have required the 60% of voters vote on something to change the state constitution. Simple majority now. Republicans did their usual thing. They did their bait and switch and said, oh, this is an attempt to keep wealthy special interests from hijacking the amendment process for their own gain. And in May, it was on a party line vote that this proposal went on the ballot to begin with. The Republicans all voting for it and Democrats voting no to put the, put, put the ballot on, to be clear. Okay, That's how it got there. Even though the Republicans said they weren't going to do it, and even though they try to say this is an attempt from outside special interest, blah, 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 blah. But it was about abortion, but it wasn't just confined to that because it's a matter of democracy. And it's America or Trumpism. You can't have both. We either have a democracy or we don't have a democracy. And that's one of the things that's been so sorely tested in the last seven years that I will never be quiet about, but I will never shy away from speaking about it. And what the Ohio legislature tried to do was carry their message forward about anti-abortion politics, right? They've passed some of the nation's strictest laws. Last year, they banned the procedure as early as six weeks into pregnancy. This was right after Roe was overturned in Dobbs. And now that question is uh, being considered before the Ohio Supreme Court right now. So Ohio is considering uh, the constitutionality of these of these abortion laws. But the law's passage, this anti-abortion law, drove a successful grassroots campaign to get abortion rights on the ballot to begin with, which is what the Republicans were trying to stop with this anti-democratic amendment. I know it's confusing. Voting on something to make sure something else doesn't happen. But it's happening. This November, Ohioans will have will be able to vote on an abortion rights amendment to the state constitution. Okay, it would upend the new law that was passed; these draconian restrictions on abortion. It would give women total legal control over their bodies, as they should over their reproductive decisions. The government cannot regulate their uteri. Thank you very much. It would allow doctors to make medical judgments on the need for abortions, and it would restrict the state to regulating the any abortion only after a fetus is judged viable. A viability test, right? Six weeks, many women don't even know they're pregnant. And raising an amendment to 60% of the votes would have put the fate of that in greater doubt because polls show that Ohioans respond to abortion rights in a majority, but it's about 58, 59%. So imagine it had been 59% uh, had this amendment passed, had issue one passed yesterday, uh, Tuesday. And this November, the uh, abortion rights question was put before Ohioans. And yes, a majority of voters in Ohio want women to have reproductive control and have bodily autonomy over their over their bodies and their reproductive choices, et cetera. Could have been 59%. And abortion rights would have failed. And the state legislature could continue to pass onerous restrictions um, regulating a woman's right to choose. For the last 11, excuse me, for the last 111 years, Ohio voters have had the power to propose and vote on ballot initiatives, okay? Only a third, this is according to Ballotpedia, only a third of constitutional amendments ever got past the 60% threshold. So you can see why the Republicans were doing this, right? So two-thirds of the time, 
voters didn't reach 60% agreement, but they reached majority agreement. Okay? So these barriers would have been restrictive to say the least. And abortion rights advocates got a half a million verified signatures to the state offices to get on the November ballot, which is more than you need. I think the number is 200,000, but I don't know. But they got half a million verified signatures to get this ballot initiative on abortion rights in November. So Tuesday's election, in effect, was a proxy, really, for the November election. Again, it was anti-abortion forces against um, supporters of abortion access. And it was a multi-million dollar campaign on both sides. Ballotpedia, again, said that about $32.5 million had been spent on the battle, split equally. Yeah, like $16 million each side spent on making sure this happened. Now, 8 and $10 did come from donors outside Ohio, but $4 million came from Richard. His last name is U-I-H-L-E-I-N, Uline, I believe it is, a single donor. He's a package and shipping um, company magnate from Illinois. He's a major, major Uline Inc. is his company. You can look it up. He's a prolific backer of far-right causes. Okay, He gave $4 million of roughly the $16 million the anti-choice side marshaled in this debate. So there you go. That's a quarter of it. Okay? Let's think about that. Out-of-state donors also included the Susan B. Anthony Pro-Life America PAC. Uh, they're a major anti-abortion act- advocacy group. They gave $6.4 million. Uh, the Concord Fund, which is a Federalist Society-backed anti-choice organization, uh, which gives money to um, Republican nominees to the Supreme Court, they were a donor. Okay, And then, of course, the other side had their donors. So the 1630 Fund is a Washington, D.C. supporter of progressive causes, causes. They gave a little over $2.5 million. Um, Carla Jerviston. Jervitson, excuse me, she's a Palo Alto, California doctor and Democratic Party donor bigwig, gave a million bucks. So one of the lies coming out of the right-wing ecosystem is this was Ohioans were flooded with liberal and progressive money to force abortion down the throats of America. Bullshit. Nonsense. Equal sides here, roughly coughed up $32 million in total, $16 million apiece, basically, in this battle, and the anti-abortion side lost. So as much as there was money coming from uh, uh, Democratic-affiliated PACs and progressive organizations and pro-choice organizations, you bet it was coming from right-wing donors, too. It's always coming from right-wing donors. There is money abundant on on the conservative side. We know this from the Mercers and the Koch brothers and lots of dark money that funds a lot of these causes that do not represent the majority of the country, okay? Beyond the battle over abortion, Voters were pissed off that the legislature would take away their Democratic small D rights, right? Because as I said, last December, lawmakers banned almost all August elections because if people don't vote in them. And it would be easy prey for all this special interest money to flood in and pass something that would not be uh, what the voters wanted, that would not reflect the will of the electorate. Well, in May, GOP legislature ch- changed their mind once they saw an abortion rights amendment coming down the pike. So talk about special interests, right? So a lot of people in normally red districts were pissed. So for example, Cincinnati, uh, the suburbs of Cincinnati have long been Republican. And in Miami Township, which is a Cincinnati suburb that went strongly for Trump, there were voters who who said that this was really a, a tilt of the playing field, you know, forcing their values on us, you know? Changing the way government runs, changing the democratic process just so you can get your agenda through. The left shouldn't do it and the right shouldn't do it. Nobody should do that. Okay? And then there were people that said, hey, the progressives are evil and they don't want Ohio to be a red state and they hate our values and this is why all this special money came in. The bottom line is those are the facts, folks. Folks, excuse me. Those are the facts. And the important takeaway here which I also tweeted yesterday, which I can't say enough, is that even in a red state that twice voted handily for Trump, and I know that's a disconnect given what you saw Tuesday, but they did, on abortion and even things, common sense gun reforms, and you know 
people having health insurance and things that are really not Republican or Democrat, but have become deeply polarized. A vast majority of the voters in Ohio and elsewhere are in the common sense center. They are dirty moderates, folks. They're not on the far left, but they are not on the far right. Ohio is so extremely gerrymandered, as I pointed out, that the nuance of the electorate is obscured to think that because Trump turned this into such a red state after Obama won it twice in 2008 and 2012, Trump carried 2016 and 2020, that seems out of reach for Joe Biden this time, that somehow it reflects this deep strain of MAGA style right wing politics, which of course is very much in Ohio much in parts of Ohio, but in the rest of Ohio, it isn't. And then in between there, some people call it the murky middle. Some people call it the netherworld. We call it the people's choice. We call it the majority of people who are issue by issue, who think things through, who reject, reject extremism, and who know at the end of the day that abortion rights matter, People's right to control their own bodies, women's rights matter. But what's the overhang here? Democracy matters. And we've seen it from the big lie in 2020, which Trump has still perpetrated. It's got him in such legal hot water, right? All his attempts to overturn the 2020 election. For all of the distrust and discontent and disinformation that has been sown by MAGA through these years. And the media across the board is responsible, not just right-wing media, but right-wing media has a vested interest in telling people that whatever they believe, those rights have been taken away by progressives and communists and socialists and Joe Biden, none of which is true. You can believe what you want to believe. But what you can't do is use the mechanisms of government, of democratic government, of representative democracy in an unlawful way, in an anti-democratic way to suit your own agenda. And Ohio saw that coming. The Buckeyes said bullshit. So nobody knows for sure, but it looks like abortion rights should win a clear majority of voters in November, thanks to the failure of issue one on Tuesday. And Ohio will have abortion rights in state constitution. Um, negating and nullifying all the horrible laws that have been passed and restrictions since Roe was overturned. Just the people spoke. And that's America. And that democratic process is what must be protected at all costs. It must be defended. It must be fought for. It must be guardrailed. And that fight for democracy never sleeps. On to 2024 we go. Folks, thank you for listening. Um, obviously, if you are on TikTok, you got to find me there, at Dirty Moderate Nation. And if you are listening to this podcast, thank you very much. Tell your friends to find us anywhere they get their podcasts and subscribe. So much exciting content coming your way. We are here prepping uh, for the fight for democracy, engaging in it every day, but prepping a huge, a huge role in that fight ahead of the most important election of our lifetime, 2024, which is just around the corner. In the meantime, folks, stay dirty, stay moderate, and stay safe.